Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I have been so looking forward to this show because my guest is from England. She's a businesswoman. She opens up shops, but they're very unusual shops. They, they have signs in the window. We pray for miracles. We interpret dreams. Who's ever heard of such a shop like this? And large numbers of non-believers in the Messiah go into her shop and God must be so pleased for the first time we've gotten out of the four walls and we're doing what we were created to do. Better than 90% of these non-believers get miracles and healings when they walk into the shop and then they are open to a presentation that there's only one way to know God, and that's through the Jewish rabbi, Jesus. <laughs> so, Alice, I love what God's doing in your life. I love the fact that you're in the marketplace, you're, you're starting businesses, and I've got a picture of the sign in one of your businesses, and the, and, uh, the sign says, it's like a chalkboard, and it says, free, explanation mark, <laughs> healings, miracles, dream interpretation. Uh, do many non-believers take advantage of this? I'm surprised by the number of people that come in. They're just walking down the street, they're doing their shopping, they're coming to a tourist, you know, visiting Chester, and they see the sign, they come in asking about the free miracles. Well, you know, it didn't just happen. What I find is many that operate in the gift of miracles, there was a price to pay. Uh, Alice, you tell me that you cried out for 12 years. What do you mean by that? Well, I'd read the scriptures, I read the miracles that Jesus did, I read that he told us that we can do the same and even greater things. And I read about past revivalists that were doing this stuff, and I thought, I want to do that. I, wanna, I just believe the Bible and I want to do it. But I would, I would pray for people and I didn't see miracles happening. And people would say, just, just give up, you've tried for too long. But I Not just people. There's a little <laughs> voice in your head that says, not for me. Uh, well, I identify that voice right now. It's the devil. Go ahead. Yeah, but I just thought, no, I believe what the Word of God says. So I'm going to continue. But 12 years is a long 12, time. 12 long years. Yeah. And I would be up in the night. I was praying. I was crying. I was fasting. I mean, people, you know, I'd pray for people. They'd get worse. Some people died. I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay, you, you open your shop, you have that nice sign in the window. Yeah. Tell me one of the first miracles that happened. Well, we opened, to start with, we opened our cafe, and it was in a housing estate where there's lots of crime and drugs. And um, this, this teenager comes in, and the police had warned us about him. Out of the whole neighborhood of 18,000 people, we were warned about this one young guy. And he comes in, he gave us, gave us a yeah, false you name. You picture that? The <laughs> one person they're warned about, uh, she's warned by the police about, wanders into their shop. I'm yeah, sorry. it was, uh, you know, it was just as soon as we opened our cafe, he comes in, me, and we just happen to be talking about like words of knowledge. Sure. So we say, would you like a word of knowledge? So we tell him something that he was doing the day before, where he'd 
got into how trouble. You know and he's like, how do you know that? <laughs> and I said to him, well... If I was the police department, <laughs> I'd hire her. <laughs> so I said to him, there. I said, because God, God was there, there. and God's God just was told there. me what you did yes, yes, and he's like god was there yes. and he was so scared you know the the color drained from his face but he had a broken ankle because he'd been climbing onto a roof of a house to well, try why and break... was he climbing on the well roof? you know he was trying to break in oh, okay. the house. and he fell off the roof broke his ankle and a lot of these people they won't go to hospital because the police will find out so he said we said to him can we pray for your ankle and jesus will heal it and he's like yeah whatever so we prayed for his ankle instantly the bones reconstructed went back together he was healed, and that was the first of the many miracles that we've had. Tell me about, because uh, this is outrageous, what you're about ready to hear, <laughs> totally outrageous. I want Alice to tell me about a man by the name of Terry Fingers. That's one of my favorite stories. This guy comes Jesus into our cafe, and we're talking to him about the miracles, and he says, oh, I need a miracle. So he explains, he said, five years ago, he said, I was climbing through a broken window. Now, I didn't like to say, what were you doing climbing through a broken you window? You have a lot of people <laughs> like that, have you noticed? <laughs> we do. So, but we love them. God loves them so much. And he, he was climbing through the window, and the bits of glass on the frame of the window pane, you know, the frame, went into his fingers. And he didn't go to hospital, so all these years later, the, the glass was still there. Mm. I could see marks, it was hard. His friend said, I've tried with a Stanley knife to get the glass out. I mean, it sounds disgusting, and it won't come out. So I said to him, I said, Jesus will get the glass out. So I just grabbed his hands. Now, now when you said that, yeah? did you really believe that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why not? <laughs> The thing is, you see, Jesus, when he died on the cross 2,000 years ago, he's done it all, so we just got to take it. So I just grabbed his hands and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command all the glass to come out of his body. When he goes home, he comes back into the cafe the next day. He says, you'll never guess what happened in the night. I've been up all night, he said. Bits of glass have been coming out of my fingers on their own. Just, he didn't even go to bed. He just, he just pulled them out, it didn't hurt. The glass was coming out. But he said, the funny thing is, he said, for 30 years, I've had a problem with my foot. And he'd had this pain in his foot. He couldn't walk properly. There was a hole like that in the sole of every pair of shoes he'd had for 30 years. And he said, as the glass is coming out of my fingers in the night, he thinks, what is going on with my foot? He looks down. He sees a tiny piece of glass. Is that what was making the hole in yeah. his shoes? Yeah. Nobody knew. You see, he didn't know. I didn't know. But the glass comes out of his foot. What I didn't know is that there was glass there, but I said, at the name of Jesus, every bit of glass come out of his body. I didn't say his fingers, and at the name of Jesus, every knee's got about, including glass in somebody's foot. It had to come out. Yeah, you know what that reminds me of? <laughs> Do you remember when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, and <laughs> Lazarus rose from the dead? If Jesus had said, dead, come forth, I think we'll be right back. <laughs> Right back to It's Supernatural. My passion is for you to walk in divine health 24-7. That's why I handpick my favorite healing scriptures from many translations of the Bible, personalized them for you, and made them available in this free ebook. I want you to meditate or pray out loud these scriptures over your life daily and witness the supernatural healing power of God's kingdom come upon you. Download your free Healing Scriptures ebook now. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, I just found some outrageous miracles um, from Alice. Uh, but the purpose of a miracle is to grab someone's undivided attention to hear the good news that God loves them and God sent his son to die for them. So these two people mm -hmm. that you talked about in the previous segment, yeah. did they receive the Lord? Yeah, they both gave their lives to Jesus. Now, you did a little survey uh, in 2009 when you opened one of your shops, uh, and uh, how many miracles occurred in that situation? Well, I'd, it worked out one every single day for, a year, for almost a year. Can you imagine if every business in your country, in your city, uh, had a shop like that? There'd be one. Do you realize that every shopkeeper that did this would be declared a saint by the Catholic Church? <laughs> you do know that. 
<laughs> but uh, Alice, now this, you, you thought it was outrageous before. You know what? I has not seen nor ear heard all that God has in store for us, for you. Tell me about the glory cloud showing up. I mean, this isn't in some church service. This is in the streets. Tell me about it. What happened was I was going to work in the cafe that day and the Holy Spirit told me that a drug dealer was going to get saved, was going to give his life to Jesus in the cafe. So I'm sitting in the cafe that day, I'm chatting to a lady and in walks this young guy that I know is a drug dealer and I thought it's going to be him. So he gets his food but then he goes outside and sits on the grass with his friends out, outside the cafe and I didn't want to go and talk to him outside with his, with his friends there. So I said, Father, would you send one of your angels to go and to get him to come back into the cafe? And as soon as I said it, we watched him stand up and come back to the cafe. So we went just to the door of the cafe and um, we just started prophesying to him, telling him how much God loved him. He had some issues, some health issues he'd had for a long time. We prayed, he was instantly healed. So we called his three friends over and we started prophesying and praying over them too. And then suddenly one of them says, what is that? Is that something to do with God? And I look up and right in front of our cafe, you know, in the middle of this big housing estate with the crime and the drugs and everything, it's the biggest, hugest cloud. I mean, it was so thick, I couldn't see through it. I couldn't, I don't know how high, high it was. It's too Were high you to the see. only one that saw this? No, because these guys said, What is that? Huh. Is that to do with God? And it was about 100 feet from end to, from, you know, wide. The, these drug dealers are saying, <laughs> What is that? That's the type of signs we need. Are you great? Oh, you, what is, is that? <laughs> And I so wish that I'd taken a photo, but I just, I said, you know, I think that is the glory cloud, it's the presence of God. And the first thought in my head, I just said it out, I said, who wants to get saved? Who wants to give their life to Jesus? And they all thought, and, yeah, we want to get saved. So I said, well, <laughs> I thought I'd better explain what it means. I said, You're gonna, your life is going to change, your life will no longer be your own. And I said, who wants to get saved now? Yeah, yeah, we really want that. We want a new life. And so they came into right into the center of the cafe. People all around eating their food. You know, my mother-in-law sitting there watching it all. They get on their knees, the four of them. And me and this other woman, we hold hands in a circle right in the middle of the cafe. And they confess their sins. They give their lives to Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes. They, get, they can't even get up off the floor. They're so whacked by the, by the presence of God. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Um, listen, Alice, <laughs> everything you tell me makes me sound like I'm reading the Bible, but that is normal. I want you to be normal, normal as defined by the Bible. What about the woman uh, that had MS and oh, could yeah. not walk for 24 years? She was in a motorized wheelchair. Her neighbor brought her into the cafe. She believed in God, but didn't believe that he wanted to heal her. So I gave her a couple of scriptures. We were busy, we were just finishing off. I prayed for her and I said, in two days time, you're gonna be healed. Two days later, I got a phone call to say that she'd stood up out of a wheelchair. I mean, she had no feeling, no movement from the waist down. She stands up out of a wheelchair and she sits back in it. A few days later, they bring her back into the cafe and we move her wheelchair out of the way. I mean, she was so scared, she'd not used her legs for 24 years. And we held on to her, and she gets up out of the wheelchair, and then she begins to move her legs. I mean, the muscles must have come back, you know, as, as the miracle is just happening. People are sitting there watching this. They start cheering, non-Christians sitting there, they're applauding her. She walks, she lets go of us, and she walks all the way across and back again and comes and sits in a normal chair. And she said, I never knew that God wanted to heal me, but now I do. And she was so blessed. We were crying, I mean. But, you know, have you read about in, in the Bible, Philip, and he got, found himself in another city. He got actually <laughs> transported. Uh, now, I can see Philip being transported. Uh, but a non-believer? Tell me what happened. There's this lady who knew nothing about Jesus. She comes into our cafe. She got a son in prison and another in trouble with the police. Please pray for me, she said, for my family. I'm about to go on vacation. It's a two-hour drive, but I've been there before. But if you can just pray a blessing on me and my family. So we prayed a blessing. She gets into a car. She's heading for Haven Holiday Park in Patheli in Wales, on the coast. Five hours later, she realizes she's in the middle of Wales. All she can see is mountains and sheep, no sign of any people at all. 
I mean, it must be hours away from Haven Holiday Park in Patheli. She says, God, please help me to get to Haven Holiday Park, Patheli. She said, if you can get me there, I will give my life to you and I'll be a good person for the rest of my life. Well, she's driving along. Suddenly, her, it's getting dark, her headlights switch off, her GPS switches off, her phone switches off all exactly the same time. She screams, she slams her foot on the brake. She looks out of the window and there is Haven Holiday Park, Patheli. Yeah, how long did this whole thing take? Oh, I don't know, it's just instant. She just, instantly, she got there. So who worries about not having enough gasoline and fuel? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that is normal. And but I've got to say, you know, she comes back into our cafe after this two-week vacation. She comes back, she was kind of a bit reticent to tell us what had happened. She felt really stupid. But I said, you know, it's just like Philip in Samaria. She said, but I, I, I want to give my life to God like I promised him. What do I need to do? So there and then she, she confessed her sin and she gave her life to Jesus. And her two sons gave their lives to Jesus too. Now, Alice told me that she saw angels in our studio digging wells, mm -hmm. and there's going to be an explosion of healing. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and receive Alice Cresswell's anointed two books, A Diary of Miracles, Part 1 and 2, and her powerful two-part audio CD teaching series, How to Move in the Power of Healing and Miracles. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9224. Through her anointed books and two-part audio CD teaching, you will receive an impartation of supernatural faith to believe God for the impossible. Learn five key foundations that will help you move in the supernatural power of healing and miracles. Learn to envision the kingdom of God and witness darkness overtaken with the light of God's glory. Walk in supernatural kingdom authority to proclaim on earth what exists in heaven. Receive power to submit your will to that of the Holy Spirit. Understand how you can begin to walk in outrageous miracles, healings, and see souls saved every day. The audio CD contains powerful prayers of impartation so you can begin walking in the supernatural every day. Don't miss out on getting Alice Cresswell's anointed two books, A Diary of Miracles, Part 1 and 2, and her powerful two-part audio CD teaching series, How to Move in the Power of Healing and Miracles. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9224. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9224 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, Alice Cresswell has what the world would call out outrageous faith. Now, when you pray for someone and they're not healed, what goes on inside of you? Um, it rarely happens. It rarely happens. <laughs> <laughs> if, if somebody's not healed, I will pray again. I will say, well, it's got to go. Let's pray again. So sometimes it takes two or three times, but it's, it's got to go. That, that is, although the world would call that outrageous faith, <laughs> I call that Normal faith. Uh, speaking of normal faith, tell me about uh, the man. Uh, that, see, she, uh, th these gifts operate not just in her shops. They operate <laughs> wherever she is. Uh, tell me about the man with the hearing aids. Okay, well, that's quite... Uh, I like that story. It's, I was in the supermarket. You like every story. I do, actually. They're all amazing. <laughs> God's amazing, isn't he? But I was in the supermarket one day, and this lady was walking towards me, first of all, with... She had a... She'd broken a foot. Now, she, by the way, yeah. can anyone do what you're doing oh, that's a believer? If I can do it, anybody else can do it. We all have the same Holy Spirit living in us that raised Jesus from the dead. So, yeah, we just got to use that power that we have through Jesus. It, it, have you taught people to do everything you can do? Yeah, there's many people that they wanted to see miracles and I would just teach them how to do it and then they're doing it. I mean, it took me 12 years of praying, but now what you find is you, you 
get a breakthrough for other people too. So others, I just teach them and they start doing it and they, the miracles happen for them. Okay, take me to, back to the store. Yeah, so I'm in the supermarket. There's this lady, she obviously needs healing. So I, I approach her and I feel like, I hope nobody's watching me. And I said to her, can I pray for your foot and Jesus will heal it? And she's like, oh, I've got to go, I've got to go. Looks at her watch and she just races off, like trying to hobble down the supermarket aisle with all the uh, groceries everywhere. So, and I was just feeling a bit, you know, rejected. When this elderly gentleman Excuse comes up to me and he says, excuse me, he said, I love your hair. And I thought, oh, isn't God good? You know, he sent somebody to try and, you know, to cheer me up. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. And then I noticed he had hearing aids in both of his ears. So I said, can I pray for your ears and Jesus will heal them? Well, he was so deaf, he couldn't hear a word I was saying with his hearing aids turned up full. So I thought, right, I'm going to go for it. So I, put, I went like that on his, with his um, my hands on his ears. And I said, in the name of Jesus, ears open. And he's thinking, what's going on? So he pulls out the hearing aids and he realizes he can hear every single word that I'm saying. And then I notice he's got a walking stick. So he tells me his, um, he's got like muscle wasted. He hasn't got many muscles in his leg. So I said, you put your hand on your leg where the problem is. So he kind of puts his hand there. Then I put my hand on top. And imagine we're in the supermarket. I've got my hand on this guy's leg and we're standing there, you know, and then who should come round the corner but his wife. Oh no. <laughs> What's going God here then, she says. And I'm like, I said, oh, I said, I'm a Christian minister, you know, trying to look like a Christian minister, not doing a very good job of it. So, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. So, like, I just grabbed his stick and I said, walk in the name of Jesus. So he starts, like, tentatively walking and then it gets faster and he starts jogging up and down. And then his wife realizes she can, he can hear every word that she's saying. So they're crying, they're hugging, I'm joining in, we're crying and hugging in the middle of the supermarket. And I said, do you know Jesus? And they said, well, yes. we do actually know Jesus, yes, but we didn't know that he healed today. Uh, but, speaking but now of they healing, do. you told me about those healing angels that are yes. here. I, yes. I want you to speak what they're showing you to speak right now. Well, there's somebody watching us right now, and I believe that there's somebody with multiple sclerosis. You know, we mentioned that already. But the person with multiple sclerosis, I believe that God is healing you right now. I really have the sense of the presence of God in this place. Real strong anointing for healing right now. So we just release that healing anointing. And just, you know, I speak to the person with multiple sclerosis, but also anybody who has any kind of illness or infirmity, anything wrong with you, just put your hand now on the part of your body that you would like healing. If it's all over you, just put your hand on your head. And we just pray, I just release that now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to every infirmity. I speak to multiple sclerosis and I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. Everybody be healed now. Receive that into your body because it's from Jesus. Just let him touch you and receive it by faith. And then just start to just test out what is going on in your body. Try and do something that you couldn't do before. Studio audience, you do that. You at home, you think I don't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got a surprise? No. <laughs> but come on, do something. Yeah. Shake it off. Shake that spirit yeah, off. Come on. Stand up. Jump. Do whatever yeah. it takes. Yeah. Give me one quick key that you've learned over the years oh, wow. to be healed. I know that's hard with just one. Give I, me one. A major one is your life is not your own. Once you've decide to follow Jesus, you've been crucified with Christ. You've just got to just do whatever it takes and do not give up. I guess that's two keys, isn't it? But do not give up. Just keep contending for what God's put on your heart and just do it and, and believe him. And he'll, Was happens. there a point in the 12 years that you were contending that you almost gave up? A few times I just thought I, I would be crying and I would just say, I can't do this anymore. But then I'd think, but Especially when she <laughs> prays for someone that dies. Oh, it, it's, it's tough. And it's when it's, you know, and obviously people are grieving. And it's, it, we, I had some awful times that I just, and people would say, well, don't, get, don't raise people's hopes up. They might get disappointed. And, and I, but I thought, no, I'm going to do what the Bible says, what God's called me to do and what he's called us all to do. He said to, for us all to go and raise the dead and cast out demons and heal the sick. So I just, I would just keep going and I just said, I know one day it's going to happen and one day it did. Okay. What's the, what's the lesson for you? 
Don't you dare give up just before mm -hmm. the victory. See, the reason the devil's hitting you and hammering you and things aren't happening is because you're about ready to have the biggest release, the biggest explosion of God's spirit in history. So, I mean, the devil's overplayed his hand with you. If you are one of the few people that do not know Jesus, Get right with God right now. You just tell God you're sorry for all the mistakes. You believe that his blood washes them away. You're clean. And Jesus, come inside. Be my Lord. Use your words. He'll understand your heart. And just open yourself up to the love of God. It's about time. He's been waiting. Alice Cresswell is a businesswoman from England who opens up unusual shops that have signs in the window that say, we pray for miracles and we interpret dreams. Large numbers of non-believers go into her shops and better than 90% get healed and witness miracles. Many are saved. Now she wants to help you walk in the supernatural of God every day. The Holy Spirit told me to keep a diary. So I, I started writing a diary and I, as soon as I started writing the diary, we opened a cafe and the miracles broke out and have not stopped. The Lord told me, you have got to publish this and make it available to other people. Because my heart really is to see others doing miracles, doing the things that Jesus said that we can do. People that contact us say, my life has changed as a result of reading your book. Call now and receive Alice Cresswell's anointed two books, A Diary of Miracles, Part 1 and 2, and her powerful two-part audio CD teaching series, How to Move in the Power of Healing and Miracles. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9224. Through her anointed books and two-part audio CD teaching, you will receive an impartation of supernatural faith to believe God for the impossible. Learn five key foundations that will help you move in the supernatural power of healing and miracles. Learn to envision the kingdom of God and witness darkness overtaken with the light of God's glory. Walk in supernatural kingdom authority to proclaim on earth what exists in heaven. Receive power to submit your will to that of the Holy Spirit. Understand how you can begin to walk in outrageous miracles, healings, and see souls saved every day. The audio CD contains powerful prayers of impartation so you can begin walking in the supernatural every day. If you want impartation, just raise your hands, just close your eyes, look to Jesus. Father, let your angels just wander around and touch those. I release that impartation, whoa, I'm feeling that, <laughs> and healing. If you could have walked along with Jesus, you wouldn't have gone to Bible school. You would have just watched what he did, heard what he taught, and did the same. That's why I want you to read this, the two books and have the two CDs on the exploits of Alice. And I want you to do the same thing that she's doing because she's doing the same thing that Jesus did. And I want you to do even greater. Don't miss out on getting Alice Cresswell's anointed two books, A Diary of Miracles, Part 1 and 2, and her powerful two-part audio CD teaching series, How to Move in the Power of Healing and Miracles. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9224. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9224 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest heard a word from God which has revolutionized his life. God said this year, is the year of God's supernatural favor. And when he starts talking about this, waves, I mean waves of supernatural favor are going to come upon you.